Welcome to the organic chemistry section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're gonna be going through questions 86 to 90. So first I'll show you guys a question so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 86, 87, 88, 89, and 90. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 86, it says an amide bond between amino acids can be formed via a blank. So an amide bond, what type of reaction is that? So an amide bond is essentially a bond between the C group or the carboxyl group of one amino acid and then the amine group of another amino acid. And what happens is the amine is a nucleophile. It goes and attacks a carboxylic acid. We get breaking of the double bond and then reforming of it. And then our leaving group is the OH group on the carboxylic acid. What we end up getting is this, which is an amide or a peptide bond plus our byproduct, which is water that originally came from the carboxylic acid. So what happened is we produced water as a result of this reaction. That's called a condensation or a dehydration reaction. So B is the correct answer. Option A is incorrect. A hydration reaction is where you break a bond, where you break up some molecule using water. So it would be the opposite of this if water was a reactant. It's not a decarboxylation reaction. That's when you remove a carbonyl group by having CO2 as a product. That's not what's going on here. And it's not a redox reaction. We're not getting oxidation or reduction. A carboxylic acid and an amide, they're on the same oxidation level. So B is the correct answer here. In question 87, it says a student prepares a solution of ethanol and adds one equivalent of PBr3 to the mixture. The student extracts the al alkyl product and then adds an equivalent of CH3Li to the purified product in solution. What is the final product of the reactions? <coughs> so we had two reactions which took place. The first is the student reacted ethanol with PBr3. And you should know that when you take an alcohol, and react it with this organic chemistry reagent, PBr3, you get replacement of that OH group with a bromide. So we now have an alkyl bromide. The student took this alkyl product and then reacted it with this organolithium. And what this does is essentially we have this CH3 minus Li plus. We have this organolithium and it is a nucleophile. What we did is we converted our original alcohol into an electrophile now, which can undergo an SN2 type reaction. And then we get our final product, which is that where the bromide used to be, we now have addition of that new carbon, that new methyl group. So we have three carbons. So we just have a straight three carbon chain. Our answer is propane. So it's none of the other ones because we don't have we don't have the bromo remaining and we don't have the OH group remaining. So that's what the other options are giving us. But you should know that PBR3 gets rid of that OH group immediately. In question 88, it says that TLC is performed on samples at different time points of a reaction. The matrix is a polar stationary phase and the mobile phase used is a one to 10 ratio of ethyl acetate to diethyl ether. Blots in early time points show a compound with an RF value of 0.38 slowly diminishing and being replaced with a compound with an RF value of 0.22. Which of the following reactions could have taken place? So we have a polar stationary phase, and then you can just assume that the mobile phase is going to be less polar than that. So based on that, in our TLC, whatever is more polar, our compound, is going to stick to the stationary phase and travel up less. And the RF value is telling us essentially how far a compound traveled. So if an RF value is higher, then that means that that compound stuck or it kind of bonded well more so with the mobile phase and was carried higher, meaning it's more nonpolar. So we had something at one time point which had a 0.38 RF and then later became 0.22. So that means what's happening is RF is going down over time, which means that the compound that we're looking at is becoming more polar over time. And then we're asked which reaction took place. Well, the only reaction that could have taken place is one which turned a less 
polar compound into a more polar one. So A is incorrect because there used to be this OH group and now it turned into this like ethyl group. That is incorrect because it became more nonpolar. This would mean that we get a higher RF later on instead of a smaller one. B is also incorrect because you got rid of that OH group and replaced it with a methyl, so you took a carboxylic acid, turned it into a ketone. No. C is good because at C, we now added this new OH group, which means that the compound is more polar. So C is our correct answer. <coughs> and finally, in option D, it's also incorrect because an OH group was replaced with a methyl. In question 89, it says beta D-glucose has five stereocenters with these designations. Which of the following stereocenter designations below is considered the enantiomer? So if we want to find the enantiomer or something, that means that its stereochemistry is inverted at every chiral center. So that means that it's a complete mirror image. So for that, we need to have at every stereocenter the opposite stereochemistry. So one becomes R, two instead of R, it becomes S, three is R, four is also R, and finally five is S. And that matches up with option one. And the other options are incorrect because they are giving us diastereomers. They're not flipping the this, this stereochemistry at every stereocenter. In question 90, it says the pKa of the amino acid tyrosine is between 10 and 10.3. Tyrosine molecule R groups are phenolics with the hydroxyl hydrogen titrating in the pH range given. If a given solution of tyrosine molecules is brought from pH 9 to pH 11, what do you expect to occur to the hydroxyl group? So the pK of tyrosine is around there, so about 10-ish, and then we raise the pH from 9 to 11. And what you should know about the pK is that if you are at the pK, that means like if your pH of the solution is at the pK of some group, then you have a 50-50 mixture of the protonated form and the deprotonated form. But when you're one removed, you have essentially all of one type. So if you're one below, so instead of 10, we're at 9, then you have essentially all of the protonated form because you're at a more acidic pH and virtually none of the deprotonated form. And then the opposite, if you went to 1 plus, so 10 plus 1, meaning 11 pH, now you have essentially all of that, that hydrogen deprotonated. So what happens if we go from 9 to 11? That means that we had originally the protonated form and we went to the deprotonated. So option A is saying the hydroxyl will go from being protonated at pH 9 to being deprotonated at pH 11. Yes, this is correct. Option B is saying the hydroxyl group will go from being deprotonated at pH 9 to being protonated at pH 11. No, that's incorrect. It doesn't make sense. As you go higher in terms of pH, you're becoming more basic. So it doesn't make sense that you would have it being protonated at a higher pH. More protons are available at a lower pH. Option C is saying the hydroxyl will remain deprotonated during the pH shift or protonated. No, those are both incorrect. It's not going to just remain in one form. We are going beyond the pKa. That means that some change is going to occur. And that's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you, sh what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is in the description below. And other than that, make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with the videos that we post here. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.